Howdy, y'all. First off, I'd like to say that when I first heard of Bioshock and tried to play it, I didn't really understand it much. I just couldn't get into it at the time. First-person shooter types weren't really my strong suit, so the game stayed in its case for a while. As time passed, I decided to give it another shot. I don't know if I had matured as a gamer or what, but I found that I just couldn't put the game down, and I got totally immersed in the story. The visuals, the gameplay, I mean, even the music. It was awesome. In other words, I had a blast. Now, I may not feature certain aspects of the game in this review, since there may be those out there that haven't played it yet. If you haven't, I seriously recommend it. If you've played Bioshock Infinite, you know there are some things at the end of the game that reveal some key plot points, so I promise I won't give away any spoilers to those who haven't. Now, let's start with the story. You are Jack, the main protagonist of the game. The year is 1960, and you're on a transatlantic flight over the mid-Atlantic. Jack utters one line that his family knew he would be destined for great things, and he knew them to be right. The scene quickly fades to black. Sounds of screaming and the sudden impact of his plane can be heard crashing into the ocean. Moments later, he awakens. He's gasping for air, just clinging to life. As he swims up, parts of the plane and objects of the passengers fall before him as he desperately tries to resurface. As he does, he scans the area, finding the wreckage of his plane slowly sinking below the murky depths. But then he spots a lighthouse not too far from his location. He swims towards it and finally finds himself at its steps. It's rather odd, considering there's no other landmasses to be seen from your current location. You make your way up the steps and enter a large door. The lights suddenly click on and you're greeted with an unfamiliar male statue. Above it, a red banner with gold letters stating, No gods or kings, only man. As you explore, you discover a submersible, or rather a bathysphere, that's locked into place. As you enter it, the only thing you can really do at this point is pull the lever. The hatch closes and locks itself into place, and the submersible slowly descends. Soon after that, you hear the recording of someone who calls himself Andrew Ryan, stating that he grew tired of the corruption and tyranny of government and religion, and how he took it upon himself to build a shining beacon where there would be no limitations or restraints, a place he referred to as Rapture. As you look out the window, you can see a sprawling Art Deco metropolis. You can see tube systems connecting a few of the buildings, but the city itself looks to be in a state of disrepair. As your bathos bathosphere is guided to a docking station and lifted up, you can hear chatter and a darkened room before you, but you can't exit just yet. You witness, you witness a shadowy figure screaming and wielding a hook. It, it claws and screams trying to break in. But finally it takes off. A sigh of relief. Another voice greets you over the radio. He claims his name is Atlas, and with his help, he can keep you alive. The world itself is dark and bleak with danger at every turn. But fear not, Traveler. You'll have plenty of weapons at your disposal as you progress through the game. Now let's look at what could help you along with your journey. Your first weapon of choice is the wrench, which is a good melee weapon to start out with, but, you know, a little weak. But a few good whacks here and there and your enemies will be down for the count. Then there's the revolver. It has a good rate of fire, good range and accuracy, 
and does moderate amount of damage. Ammo for the pistol is, is pretty abundant in, uh, for the first half of the game, making it a, a primary weapon for, for most scenarios. The machine gun is the second ranged weapon. It fires a rapid spray of bullets, each doing a moderate amount of damage. But its main weaknesses are it's got a heavy recoil and low, accu low accuracy at a long range. The shotgun fires a wide burst of pellets with heavy damage that are most effective at a short range. The shotgun has a high ammo reserve capacity and ammo is pretty common. A personal favorite of mine is the grenade launcher. Uh, it's a custom assembly of household and commercial parts. It fires grenades that do a buku amount of damage and it has a wide splash damage radius. The only dam uh, the only downside to this is that it could cause you to take some damage along with it. So be careful. Then there's the chemical thrower, another custom made weapon. It fires a straight, continuous stream of chemical substance and the ammo, you know, is you can pretty much find it anywhere, though it's a little trickier to find. The crossbow isn't a bad weapon at all. Uh, it's the final ranged weapon acquired in the game. It's constructed, again, of household items, including several rulers. It fires uh, single bolts with a high damage and are effective at most ranges. Bolts that are fired do not break, so you can recover and reuse them, which is pretty sweet. There's also the research camera. It does no damage itself, but it's, it's a pretty good addition to have in your arsenal. It's equipped the same way as a weapon, but uses film to take pictures and that unlock biological weaknesses and hidden secrets about most enemies you encounter. Now, what else could make this more interesting? Well, what if you had superhuman abilities? What if you could shoot fireballs from your hand or have the power of, of electricity? That's where plasmids come in. Of course, these also come at a cost. You see, the enemies you come across are highly addicted to the stuff and, you know, it pretty much has caused them to go around the bend, as it were. Never mind that, though. You could be an unstoppable force with powers of a god at your hands, right? Plasmids are special serums made from, from processed atom that introduce modified stem cells into the body, allowing for modification and mutation. It gives the users, you know, superpowers. Their use uh, requires a supply of Eve. Plasmid bottles are usually found everywhere. You can buy them from vending machines, and they're recognized by, the, by their deep red color. Now, <laughs> there are quite a few plasmids. <laughs> so, I'm going to give you a, sh uh, a little list here uh, with, a, a, with a short description. The cyclone trap spawns many tornadoes and flings victims out of your way. Pretty handy, right? The electrobolt sends a jolt of electricity to electrocute an opponent or, you know, possibly open a few locked doors in Rapture. Enrage, which is, is fun, <laughs> causes your enemies to turn on each other which definitely can be helpful when in a precarious situation. Hypnotizing Big Daddies. Now, I really didn't talk much about the Big Daddies, 
but believe me, this will come in handy. These guys will fight alongside you for a brief time. And they're, they're big and bulky and heavy and sport this huge ass drill. It's pretty, pretty freaking cool. The incinerate, <laughs> oh, fire, one of my favorites. You set enemies or combustible materials on fire and, you know, big boom. The insect swarm isn't really my favorite because it's bees. And no, I know like bees, but this spawns a swarm of bees which will home in on the nearest enemy, damaging them and distracting them. Good way to, you know, reload a weapon and cap them. The security bullseye is good to, uh, it, well, basically it hacks security devices such as turrets and it fires on enemies and it recognizes you as a friendly. The sonic boom knocks your enemies back with a powerful blast of air. And it's not bad when you're trying to, again, reload. The target dummy is pretty self-explanatory. Spawns a ghost of you, allowing you to make a quick escape. The telekinesis? It pulls the target objects towards you and allows you to throw them against walls and it causes damage to anything it hits. Finally, Winter Blast, which is another cool one. You can freeze your enemies and shatter them into pieces. That's a lot of fun. Now, there is plenty to explore in Rapture, mind you. You may have to backtrack a few times, but the visuals are sweet, the music sets the mood nicely, the story, hell, the story is pretty frickin' awesome too. Not to mention all the toys you get to play with. I hope that y'all give this game and its predecessors some love and try them out. In my opinion, if you haven't yet, you're seriously missing out. But I really have ran on long enough, and I think I covered enough material for you to be interested, I hope. So if you enjoyed this, would you kindly like, comment, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter? No pressure. Till next time, that's all I got.